Welcome to our digital worship for Sunday, May 1st. This is our third Sunday in the season of Easter. As we begin our worship, I ask you to join with me in a brief order of confession and forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin and uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy, I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal and all-merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest 
and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice, but they saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He said, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he may regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has the authority from the chief priest to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before the Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hand on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has something that he would like who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately, he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought my soul up from Sheol, restored me to life from, the, from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger in the night, but joy comes in the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death, if I go down to the pit. Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing and have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Our second reading is from Revelation, the fifth chapter. John writes, Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads and myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. 
Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one who is seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 21st chapter. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to him, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was Jesus, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. When the other disciples came into the boat, dragging the full net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me, the gospel of the Lord.
Let us pray. Lord God, may we come to you in love and praise and glory and honor and joy and thanksgiving. May we come and bring to you in this joyous season the best of all that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you've heard it said, give a man a fish and you feed him for the day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for the rest of his life. But I say to you, give a man a fish, you feed him for the day. Teach a man to fish and you never get a decent day work out of him the rest of his life. So, Simon Peter and James and John and Philip and Nathaniel and the other two disciples who are unnamed in this, you know, in the aftermath of the crucifixion and the resurrection, they go back to what they know because they don't have anything to guide them to what's to happen next. And they're probably still trying to puzzle out, what does all this mean? What does it mean that one who is dead has come back? What does it mean that Jesus is alive? But he's not here with us right here at this moment. How do we live as disciples of the risen one? And so we have this this final appearance in the Gospel of John where Jesus appears to them while they're out doing their fallback. They've gone back to fishing and they haven't caught anything all night. And again, then you have the, the repeat of a miracle which has happened before. Throw your nets on the other side and it's filled with fish. And so they, again, it's that realization. It's the Lord. This is the way he's acted before. He's back. He's doing this again. And Peter gets out of the boat and swims to the shore. The others bring the, the net and the, the boat back into the, the shore and Jesus is there to share a meal with them. Now, I'm really going to focus on this last piece between Peter and Jesus with this threefold, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Tend my sheep. Feed my lambs. You know, there's lots of theories of why this is that way. And so one of the, the prominent ones out there is that earlier in John's Gospel, Peter has denied Jesus three times right before the crucifixion. And so this is Jesus giving Peter a chance to reaffirm himself three times. Three times he said, I don't know the man. And now he can say three times, you know that I love you. And, you know, in the history of the, the early church, Peter becomes this kind of foundational figure of, of what it's, of, uh, of the faith. You know, that everybody keeps going back to him and saying, you know, how then are we to live? How then are we to act like this? And, and so perhaps it is that need for that reconciliation to, to start fresh, to start new in that role as a leader of the church. But my curious mind wonders if there's something else going on here. So you're going to have to indulge me a little bit of curiosity here. You see, I think that sometimes we understand or we think we understand what it's all going to be like. You know, that it's going to be, you know, we're going to go in and this week is uh, for football fans, you know, it's the the draft. And so it's that, that beginning. This could be the year where my team finally makes it to the Super Bowl and, you know, where they can have the parade go down the middle of the street and all these things can happen and we can all be a part of this glorious celebration together 
And for 31 teams, that's not the case. And I don't think that's what Jesus is pointing to either, is this kind of hope for Peter that everything's going to go the way it is. In fact, he's telling Peter, you know, in your old age, it's not going to go like you think it will be. You're going to be taken to a place you don't want to go. You're going to die in a way you don't want to die. And it's all going to be a part of what is God's intention for not just you, but primarily for this world that God loves, that you are a part of that. And in this back and forth between Peter and Jesus, where Jesus says to him, do you love me? And Peter keeps saying back, you know I love you. Sometimes it's helpful to know that English doesn't always capture everything that's in the statement. So there are multiple words for love in Greek. There are four, but there are three that are, are most common, especially when we're talking about the Bible. You know, there's eros, which is passionate love. And that's not what's being talked about here. There's philios, familial love. You know, um, it's where the, our, uh, the city, Philadelphia, gets its name, the city of brotherly love. Philos and Delphos. Delphos being brother, Philos being this kind of family, familial love. And then there's agape, which is this self-giving love. And so Jesus says to Peter, do you love me in this self-giving love sense? Do you love me in this agape sense? And Peter keeps saying back, Lord, you know that I love you in the filial sense, the filial sense, you know. I love you like a, a, a father or a brother. Do you love me? to where you will sacrifice for it. And again, I think that this also goes back to this scene in, in its own way of, of the crucifixion where Peter's, so if everybody else runs away, I'll stand fast, even if it means my own death. And so I think Peter is now in a position where he has to, he maybe questions that about himself. Can I really be this? Can I really be a person who can be the way Jesus is, who can love the way Jesus loves. And I'm telling you the best I can do, and you keep asking me for that next step. And yet, you still tell me to feed your sheep, tend my lambs. You know, uh, throughout this season, Again, I'm going to focus on the, the, the readings that we get from Revelation just because, one, it's a chance to preach on a book we don't preach on very much in, in the Lutheran Church. And I, I think sometimes we do that to our detriment because we, we let other people preach about it and they turn it into a book of fear. And one of the things that is repetitive throughout the book of Revelation is worship. And so we have this group of people singing in full voice, you know, I, the first time I heard that on a, uh, on a sports announcement, you know, here you have all this crowd in full voice. I was like, wow, that's a really kind of a cool phrase. You know, again, being a, a kind of a poetic way to talk about, it's really loud in here. But here in Revelation, it talks about this myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands being there in full voice, you know, singing at the top of their lungs. Sing to the Lamb who is worthy to be praised. Singing about Jesus. Singing about God. And one of the, the symbols that, that Revelation uses a lot of times and, and kind of turns on its head is the symbol of the Lion of Judah. So the Lion of Judah is an, an old symbol throughout uh, 
throughout begins in Genesis, but it's this you know this this one who's going to rise up out of Judah to be this this king that everybody's looking for, and so it it references back to David. But you know we're expecting a lion, and then what comes? A lamb. The lion is the lamb, and the lamb that is slaughtered is the lion of Judah, and it's not the way we expect. It's not the way in which the world expects it. And Jesus was not the way that the world expected it. That's one of the reasons I think that so many people misunderstood him in his time. They wanted him to be something he wasn't. They wanted him to come in glory and honor and power and might, and he comes in love and humility and service. And I think, just like Jesus could earlier tell Peter, and the other disciples, when they get it wrong, when they're arguing about who's going to be the greatest, and he says, you know, you're setting your mind not on heavenly things, but on earthly things. And you're trying to turn heaven into earth instead of earth into heaven. And heaven's way is the way of service, the way of coming down, the way of coming and being and loving even when it's rejected. And if you're going to follow me, do you love me? This self-giving love. Do you just want to be a person in the stands? Or do you want to tend my sheep and follow me where I go? To live the life that I've set out for you. You know, if you're at the point right now where you're maybe like Peter, you know, Lord, I love you. I love you in this familial sense. I love you like I would love my brother or my sister or my mother or my father. I, I, I love you. I'm not sure I can go more than that. Or maybe you're in the place where, you know, I can come in and I can sing the praises. I can be a part of that choir in full voice. We all got to start somewhere. We all got to be somewhere in the midst of this. Peter will get, I think, to this point where he'll be able to say, respond to, do you love me in this self-sacrificing way? To the point where he can say, Lord, I do love you in this self-sacrificing way. But I do think that one of the things that the gospel wants us to wonder is, so what sort of love is this that God has for us? Lord, we know that you love us. And when you ask us, do you love me? How then do we respond? And what does that love look like? What love is this? Amen. I ask you to join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we lift up this world that you love. Renew your creation and give wisdom to all your people who share in your responsibility to care for the world. Give wisdom to the leaders of nations, states, and cities to care for your people and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Protect and bless all who sacrifice to guard our freedoms, including Ben, Bryson, Christian, Clayton, Daniel, Dylan, Hayden, Luke, Michael, Spencer, Sydney, Tyler B., and Tyler G. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. We lift up before you Aaron, Avery, Aubrey, Austin, Betsy, Billy, Bob D., Bob S., Brandy, Brenda, Krista, Cohen, Dan, Darla, Dave, Deanne, Dorothy, Eliza, Francis, Jamie, Jan, Jerry K., Jerry N., Kathy, Kelly, Ken, Lori, Linda, Michaela, Matt, Maureen, Michelle, Mick, Mike, Patrick, Pete, Sandy, Scott, Shay, Susan, Tom, and Vim, and the family and friends of Lucille Eisenbrom, and those we pray for in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the ministries of the ELCA in the Northern Texas, Northern Louisiana Synod. We also lift up in prayer today, Hope Lutheran Church in Midland, Friarwood Leadership Center, and the Adult Learning, uh, Adult Lutheran Organized for Action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, in trust and in hope, we commend to you, O Lord, all for whom we pray. Amen. May the peace of God rest upon you as you gather together with friends and family in your home. So just a couple quick highlights for our life together. So we do have coming up on May 15th, our semi-annual congregational meeting. So uh, this is a normal part of our, our uh, life together where we elect council, new council members. Um, we hear a report of how things are going in the congregation and um, we also uh, hear a report from our from the Senate, those who re have represented us at the Senate Council. So that's coming up on May 15th. That'll be at 945. Also on May 15th at 1215, so during the right after our last service, we will be having a new members orientation. So it's a chance for people to get to know a little bit more about Rejoice. So it's just to come for that one day. Um, we're going to introduce you to some people. Uh, we're going to share together a meal and and again, it's just a nice, we try and make it as easy as possible. We, we want to get to know more about you, and we hope we can get to tell you a little bit more about us. Coming up on Saturday, May 21st, I'm going to be doing a, a smokehouse for Rejoice, so kind of an end-of-year celebration for us. So I'll be doing brisket and pulled pork, and there'll be other sides that are available. Um, and again, they, we're going to come together, we're going to celebrate, we're going to eat, we're going to have some fun. Um, there will be a chance, uh, if you want to give a free will offering, it'll go to Lutheran World Relief. Um, so again, that's coming up. And then coming up in, uh, in June, on June 12th, we have the return of our, our Memorial Golf Scramble. So this is a fundraiser for our youth. Um, and it'll be at, uh, at the Trails Golf Course. Uh, so registration starts this month. So you can either contact uh, Dave Greaser or Pastor Adam, and they'll be happy to get you signed up for that. So that's coming up on, on June 12th. That is all our announcements for today. So this is also the part of the service where we would receive our offering. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the way in which you make our ministry possible. So myself, Pastor Adam, um, you know, the, the staff here at Rejoice, uh, you know, the technology that we use to broadcast the service, all those things are made possible because of you. And, and you know, we're trying our best to meet people where they are and, you know, I just want to thank you for making this job possible and, and doing and continuing to be faithful in the midst of this. So if you want to support Rejoice, you can do that uh, multiple ways. You can send a, uh, a check to our physical address at 12,000 Independence Parkway in Frisco, Texas, uh, 75035. You can um, either use the Give Now button or the Tithely app on your phone. Both take you to the Tithely uh, link, and, it, and you can select Rejoice Lutheran Church in Frisco, Texas, um, and you can give that way. Um, so again, Thank you. Thank you for your continued faithfulness. At this point, we will prepare for communion. Communion is a central part of our worship here at Rejoice. It's a place where we trust that Christ meets us. So I invite you to gather together bread and 
wine or grape juice as we prepare to celebrate and um, you know as we celebrate here and as you celebrate in your home we gather together and we remember on the night in which he is betrayed how our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me And again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. May Christ be present with you as you celebrate together in your homes. Let us pray. O God, in this meal you have united us with Christ and also with each other. Send us now in the power of your Spirit that we may reflect your love to the world through the power of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God make God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.
As God has claimed us as his own in Christ, we seek to follow Christ with these marks of disciple life. Praying daily, worshiping weekly, studying the Bible, serving others, building spiritual friendships, giving to God and our neighbors in need, engaging God's mission. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.